Good morning and welcome to our Thought for the Week here at St Thomas Baptist Church. I'm Stephen, I'm the pastor and it's my joy to be able to share with you today. A few weeks ago when I last did the Thought for the Week, we started to look at the verses that described Jesus in Revelation chapter 1 verses 12 to 18. And the aim was simply to see Jesus as he really is. And we only got through a few of those verses, so I want this week just to simply pick up where we left off. And the Apostle John here sees, has already seen Jesus in verse 12, 13, the begin of 14, as the exalted one, the serene one, the flawless one. Now, it's really important to understand that when we're dealing with the book of Revelation, it's not meant to be a confusing book. J.B. Phillips, the author and translator, found the task of translating the book of Revelation in his words as thrilling. Listen to what he says. For in this book, the translator is carried into another dimension. He has but the slightest foothold in the time and space world in which he is so familiar. He's carried not into some never, never land of fancy, but into the ever, ever land of God's eternal values and judgments. John saw into the ever, ever land and there he saw someone he knew so well and that was Jesus. And at the end of verse 14 of chapter 1, he describes seeing Jesus as his eyes were like flames of fire. To John that described Jesus as, and he saw Jesus as the revealing one. His, he had flames of light that dispels darkness. I don't know if you've ever worn one of those night goggle glasses. They're cool to wear. But actually they help you see in the dark. But you're still in the dark even though you can see in the dark. Jesus comes to dispel darkness. That's a huge difference. You read in John chapter 8 and verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to his people he said I am the what? The light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but have the light of light and the light of life. Here, Jesus is the one who deals with all the darkness in our lives and all the, and, and the spiritual darkness that we face. Matthew Henry, the old preacher and writer, once said, God not only sees men, he sees through men. And for some to know that is a very uncomfortable thing. Listen to what Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 23, 24. Can anyone hide from me in a secret place, says the Lord? I am not, am I not everywhere in all the heavens and in the earth? God says to Jeremiah, I see everything. And for some of us, that makes life very uncomfortable. God sees me. But actually for others of us, actually that's a comforting thing. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. It's not a scary thing to know that God sees me. One old saint wrote, the Lord sees every minister, notes every member, observes every ministry and views every motive. When John looked into the eyes of the Lord, he knew that Jesus saw everything. And then John's gaze was diverted from Jesus' eyes down to his feet. And he now sees the relentless one. His feet were like polished bronze, refined in a furnace. The description John uses here is found nowhere else and had been found nowhere else in any other book. John made up this word, as it were, because he's trying to describe something he had never seen before. John knew that God had promised years before that his Messiah would, Psalm 110 verse 1, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. The coming Messiah would be in charge of everything. And here as he looks at the feet of Jesus, these were the feet that had walked up Calvary's hill to conquer sin. These were the feet that walked out of the tomb to conquer death. 
And here he now steps out in an unstoppable march as the great conqueror. Then John hears Jesus and his voice thundered like mighty ocean's waves. Here John sees Jesus and hears Jesus as the regal one. John knew who was speaking to him because he had heard the voice of Jesus many times. And by the way, the voice of Jesus is recognised by those who love him. John 10 verse 4. And he has gathered his own flock. He walks ahead of them. They follow him because they know his voice. Jesus wants us to know him and to follow him. As King David who described God's voice this way. In Psalm 29 verses 3 and 4. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. Listen, John had been a fisherman a long time. He knew, even now, confined to a small island, what the sound of the sea crashing against the rocks sounded like. But here, nothing compares to hearing from Jesus. Oh, to hear from Jesus in these days. Oh, to see Jesus afresh in these days. Oh, to have a fresh glimpse of the one who loves you and loves me. The one who died for you and the one who died for, for me. And the one who's coming again, if we're ready to meet him. John saw a fresh vision of Jesus. I trust we will have a fresh vision of him ourselves. May the Lord bless you in the week that lies ahead.